All right, what's going on YouTube? This is Box Wave. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, if you haven't checked out my post fight Khan Canelo video, make sure you check that out too. That's out. Put that up yesterday. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Had a good Mother's Day. Now, um, last couple of days, it's been a couple of days since the fight. I've seen the reactions from the commentators like Max Kellerman. I've seen the fans and what they posted on the internet. Um, I see the reaction and the comments people have been leaving in my uh, under my videos, okay? E including the prediction videos and stuff like that. Videos that I've been put out a while ago. So I'm seeing the reactions to everybody and I kind of wanted to respond to some of the things I've heard since the fight, okay? Now, let's start off with discussing this whole big risk factor for Amir Khan going up to 155 to fight Canelo. What do I think about that? Now, in my post-fight video, I said something along the lines as, I kind of feel bad for Khan, all right? Um, I don't want you guys to get anything misconstrued here, all right? Khan has made the decision to go up and fight Canelo Alvarez, all right? And we discussed this, or I discussed this. He made that decision to go up and fight Canelo, okay? He understood what it meant by going up and fighting Canelo, all right? The risk was well worth the reward. I don't know exactly how much he got, but he got a lot of money in this fight. Probably more money he has in his career, okay, for one fight. Let's not pretend like Canelo is not a pay-per-view attraction, okay? He's proven that countless times already, all right? He's been in there with Mayweather, He's been in there with Lara and Angulo, all pay-per-view fights, okay? I don't believe Kirkland was a pay-per-view fight, but he's been on pay-per-view several times already. He is a cash cow. He's been in there with Cotto, okay? They did, what, 900000 He's a star at this point, okay? This, we, all, we all, you know, at this point, it's Mayweather, who's retired, might be coming back to fight Conor McGregor. I don't really know. Um... We have Mayweather, we have Manny Pacquiao, and then we have Canelo Alvarez, okay? As far as pay-per-view attraction, all right? If Mayweather stays retired, if Manny Pacquiao stays retired, Canelo Alvarez is the biggest star in boxing, okay? As far as pay-per-view attraction, all right? He's fighting at 154. I mean, technically 160, but he's still fighting at the catch weight of Canelo weight, all right? Anyone... That had the opportunity to fight Canelo Al Canelo Alvarez from 140, all right, from 140 up to 160 would take that fight. Anyone. Let's not act like Amir Khan is a soldier for going up and fighting him at 155, all right? Let's not, like, let's be real here. If Bradley had the opportunity, he would take the fight, Okay. If Danny Garcia had the opportunity, he would take the fight. If Keith Thurman had the opportunity, Kell Brook, we already know that they all would take the fight, all right? If Adrian Broner had the opportunity, I'm sure he would take the fight as well, okay? If Terrence Crawford, it's not act like Canelo didn't fight guys that were moved up, blown up guys from 140 in the past, all right? Let's not pretend like that didn't happen, all right? Not to take anything away from Khan, all right? Khan went up. He made the decision, listen, his options were to fight Garcia, Brooke, or uh, Canelo Alvarez. And we all know that Canelo Alvarez makes the most sense. Yeah, it's dangerous, just like the other two fights. Brooke is dangerous, okay? Um, Danny Garcia is dangerous, all right? But we all know that if he beat Canelo Alvarez, if he beat him and outboxed him and won this fight, the risk, the, the reward of winning that fight is much bigger than beating Danny Garcia. It's much be bigger than beating Kell Brook, okay? So, let's get back to reality and let's not boost this up more than it, or, or it already was, okay? I give Khan the credit. He did a good job up until, you know, the point he, was, he got knocked out. I thought he was winning the fight. I thought the tables were turning, you know. I thought the direction of the fight was changing before he got knocked out. But he did do well, and he won some rounds. It's nothing we haven't seen before. Austin Trout won some rounds. Um, you know, Mayweather, Lara, you know, um, 
you know, Miguel Cotto. There's plenty of guys that won rounds against Canelo Alvarez. There's nothing to hype about Amir Khan and what he did, all right? There's nothing there to hype about him. You know, the only reason why people want to feel bad for him because, or they want to say that he's a warrior for taking a risk and everything, he took a risk, is because people know he has a weak chin. He knows he has a weak chin. Everyone knows that he has a bad chin, you know? And I'm not saying that he wouldn't listen. A lot of people would have got knocked out by that punch. A lot of people would have got knocked, knocked out by that punch, you know? If he landed, if Canelo was to land that clean against Lara in that fight, Lara probably would have got knocked out, okay? The thing is, he can't land clean like that against Aris Lani Lara or Floyd Mayweather. You know what I'm saying? He can't, all right? So... We know that Khan most likely was going to get knocked out. It was going to either be him outboxing Canelo or outboxing him and getting a robbery, you know, or getting knocked out. No one went into the fight said Canelo's going to get knocked out. We knew that wasn't an option. It wasn't an option. All the people know. Even the people that thought Khan was going to win the fight knew that he wasn't going to stop Canelo, all right? Going into this fight, though, we all knew that it was a huge possibility a huge one that Khan was going to get knocked out. So let's not overhype this fight, okay? If Brooke was to fight Canelo, if even if I pick Canelo to win, which I probably would, I wouldn't think Brooke get knocked out. You know, I wouldn't think Danny Garcia, who's never been knocked down, get knocked out. I wouldn't predict him to get knocked out by Canelo Alvarez, all right? But it's it's looked at a, as a, a huge risk, you know, he dared to be great. By going up to fight Canelo. He dared to be great. That's not daring to be great. You took an opportunity to fight a superstar. Which is what he wanted. Which plenty of boxers wanted. Okay. But that was his most biggest priority. Is to fight a big name fighter. And get on pay-per-view. All right. Whether it was Floyd. He went from Floyd. He went from Pacquiao. He went from Cotto. He wanted to fight all of those guys. All right. And anyone would want to fight any of those guys. So let's not over... Listen, it is what it is, okay? Khan went and took a shot. He failed. But in my opinion, this was a showcase fight for Canelo for Canelo Alvarez, just like plenty of other fights, all right? The, you, you guys are tending to forget what's going on in Canelo's career. And um, that's one of the things I wanted to discuss. Oh, before I get to that, I just want to bring up one thing, too. I would like for you guys to let me know what you think about this because this is something that we were discussing on Twitter a few days ago, okay, before the fight. Maybe about two days before the fight, I seen someone on, on Instagram, on my Instagram account, right? Someone posted a picture of Amir Khan's ranking on BoxRec, okay? Before the fight. Now, I don't know how long it's been this way or not, but I, I'm, I would assume that it's recent because, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 I've never seen it before. But before the fight between Khan and Canelo, Amir Khan was ranked on BoxRec as the number three middleweight in the world, okay? Behind Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin. Before the fight, Amir Khan was ranked number three at middleweight, okay? Before Saunders, before Jacobs, before Lemieux, before anybody else in middleweight, Khan was number three on box rec, okay? I wanted to point that out. Let me know what you guys think about that. I think it's ridiculous for obvious reasons. Goes to show that box rec is... You know, they have they have their flaws like every everyone else does. So we go to box rec and we're going to continue to go to box rec when it comes to looking at me personally. I don't really look at it, their website for pound for pound. Um, but I do look at their rankings. OK, and I do look at their records and everything. You know, it's like an encyclopedia for looking at boxing records. It's great. It's a great tool. But. They have their flaws, and I've seen something like this before. I can't remember what, but I've looked on BoxRec at times, and I've seen certain rankings, and I'm like, what? Like, what is, you know, sometimes BoxRec has 
But this was one of the most weirdest things because we already know that Khan has never fought at middleweight before. Yet he's he's ranked higher than two other champions at middleweight. It, it makes no sense, all right? So um, anyway, let me know your thoughts on that. I thought that was kind of ridiculous, all right? Um, so uh, what else did I want to discuss? Now, Gennady Golovkin. Uh, Things that I hear about people that are defending Canelo. Some of the things I've heard are some of the most ridiculous things I've heard, okay, when it comes to this fight. And listen, Canelo is a good fighter, but if I had to criticize him for anything, just like I do Gennady Golovkin, just like I do any other fighter in this sport, for certain things, there is some criticism there for each and every single one of these guys. All right, none of these guys are perfect. Okay, all of these guys pick their fights very carefully. And there's one thing that the the one issue that I have with Canelo Alvarez is that he likes to have a size power advantage in his fights. Yes, it's a fact that he can outbox plenty of fighters. But he likes to have the size advantage. There's no excuse for a 155 catch weight and for your last five fights to be at 155. There's no excuse for that. Okay? You can't make weight anymore. When Danny Garcia was doing it, when Danny was fighting above 140, still holding the title, fighting Ross Salka, Lamont Peterson, stuff like that, it was okay. It was okay. I mean, it wasn't okay. Everybody criticized bashed him for it. I was very upset that they had a unification match above the weight and they didn't fight the titles, uh, Peterson and Garcia, okay? That should have been a unification matchup, but it wasn't because they both fought above the weight. He had, what, two fights? And I believe he then moved up to 147, okay? But Canelo Alvarez is fighting at 155 and he's, a, and he's not going up to 160. There's no excuse for it. I don't care what you guys say. I don't care if he's a class, you know, the, the A-side. You guys could go with that A-side shit all you want. The guy is a coward for not moving up to 160. And maybe it's not Canelo. Maybe it's Oscar. You know, because, I, I mean, me personally, I think that Laura fight, for, ha, the, the Laura fight happened because I feel that Canelo wanted that fight. Because Laura went up there, called him out to his face, and I felt like Canelo was probably so pissed off. He's like, you know what? I'm going to fight this guy. And I'm sure Oscar didn't want it, you know. But, you know, he said he didn't want it. But I believe that. I believe in, in some cases, Canelo want to fight certain people. And I'm, I'm sure Oscar influences him on why he should fight certain fighters later or at this catchweight I believe that Oscar is the main reason why we have this 155 catchweight. You know, if it was up up, up the uh, uh, of Canelo, some of these fights that we wanted would have happened at certain different times or certain weights. But I believe that Oscar. But as far as I'm concerned, Canelo's the fighter. We're talking about Canelo. We're not talking about Oscar. We're talking about Canelo. Canelo's the one that's getting in the ring. And you're a coward. You know, at the end of the day, you're fighting at a weight. You 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 you're fighting at a weight that is 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 there's no division for your weight. You're just fighting at a weight because you can't make the smaller division anymore. You're too big to make it. I don't care what you guys say about height or weight or anything. Canelo cannot make 154 anymore. He can't. He has it for a while now. Okay? He can't make the weight anymore. When you can't make a way, you have to go to the next division. It is what it is. He's in the next division, but he has to drain the bigger fighters because he's afraid that if he fights a guy and their sizes are equal, that he's not going to have that advantage. Remember before he fought Austin Trout? Remember all those guys, those blown up guys from 140 and 147 that he was fighting? 
all those guys like Alfonso Gomez and Shane Mosley, okay, and Jose Cito Lopez. Remember all of those guys? Remember what we used to criticize Canelo before he fought Austin Trout? Before he had that fight, he didn't fight any real junior, Baldemir, he didn't fight any real junior middleweights. We used to criticize him for that. So he fought Austin Trout, won the fight. You know, I think he won the fight. Barely. I mean, he won, but he barely won. Some say Austin won more rounds. You know, I think if it wasn't for the knockdown, Austin might have edged the fight, in my opinion. I thought it was razor sharp close, but I did give it to Canelo, okay? Mayweather, obviously, he got schooled, all right? Laura, I think that's another fight that I thought he won, okay? All right? He beat Angulo, which is fair. You know, he beat Angulo. Angulo hasn't been the same since he fought Laura. He hasn't been the same. You know, so he can thank Lara for that because Angulo hasn't been the, been the same. He hasn't been the same since that eye injury. He has not been the same fighter. All right. He hasn't been the same fighter. James Kirkland, he knocks James Kirkland out. I thought it was a showcase fight. I told you that before that fight, that James Kirkland is the worst opponent for Canelo Alvarez. He was going to get knocked out because he has absolutely no defense and Canelo has way too much power to sit there. But he didn't fight the, the Charlos. He didn't fight Andre. He didn't fight Vonis Monterosian. I'm not saying that he would lose these fights, but these are all tougher fights at 154. They, they are tougher fights than Angulo and Kirkland. Those two are the same guys that's just going to come straight forward and get punched in the face all fight. That's why Canelo, it was easy for him to win those fights. They're all showcase fights. Laura and Trout were two very hard fights. Stylistically, two hard fights for Canelo to win. All right? And both of those fights are questionable. Both of those fights are debatable. You could debate who won really won those fights. All right? All the other fights, Angulo and, and Kirkland, all showcase fights. All showcase fights. Okay? Showcase fight and Khan is a showcase fight as well. All right? It's a showcase fight. Now, um, you know, at the end of the day, he can't make the weight anymore, man. If you can't make the weight anymore, you're fighting at 160 now. You know, whatever, regardless of your catch weight and everything, you're fighting. Why are you fighting at this catch weight? Canelo fans, just listen to me. Listen to me. Why are you fighting at one? Why are people defending him fighting at 155? The guy can't make 154 anymore. He can't do it. All right? He's too big. Okay? The guy walks around no smaller and no lighter than any other middleweight. Okay? He's not, you know, he's he's not walking around here. He's weighing his 30 day weigh ins, he's still weighing more than Gennady Golovkin. Okay? Why? How do you defend him fighting at 155? Like, let's be real. Enough is enough. You could be a Canelo fan and still have have some type of common sense to see that the guy is trying to stay away from 160. All right, because he knows who's there. Gennady Golovkin is there. He's trying to stay away from the guy. The guy is doing everything, whether it's him or Oscar. I don't know who it is. They're doing this to stay away from Gennady Golovkin, all right? I don't know what happened in that sparring session they had years ago. Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe Golovkin did beat him up in, in sparring. I don't know how it looked, you know, but at the end of the day, Golovkin, he's doing everything in his power to fight, to, to avoid Golovkin. And it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's, this is not Ward and Golovkin. You know, those two guys are two totally different divisions. All right? This, this is not Ward and Golovkin. It's not the same thing. These guys are in the same division. All right? He's, they're in the same division. They're fighting at the same weights. And you have a unified, you have a unified champion that's been the mandatory for that WBC, WBC belt for God knows how long. Since what? What? Rubio, maybe? Because uh, I believe Rubio was the, the mandatory for the WBC for a little while, too. 
right? Since Sergio Martinez had the belt, I believe he was the WBC mandatory. So, what else does he have to prove to get in the ring with Canelo Alvarez? Okay? Because he didn't fight a bigger name yet? Well, Cotto was supposed to be the bigger name, but Cotto, remember what happened with Cotto? Cotto paid his way to get to avoid the Gennady Golovkin fight. And he took Canelo instead. You know why he took Canelo? Because it's a bigger fight and it's an easier fight. It's not as dangerous as fighting Gennady Golovkin. Let's be real. This. If Cotto had chose to fight Gennady Golovkin and Golovkin beat him, whether by knockout decision. I think Golovkin probably would have knocked him out. All right. I, I, you know what? I bet you the fight wouldn't have been as competitive as it was against Canelo Alvarez. The Cotto fight, I mean. But anyway, all right, whatever. Cotto chose to fight Canelo. All right. Golovkin got stuck with Lemieux. He got stuck with fighting his mandatory Dominic Wade. All right. His mandatory Dominic Way, he had to fight him. You know, people criticize him for fighting. And listen, Gennady Golovkin, Gennady Golovkin is, you know, unfortunately for him, the only thing I criticize Golovkin for is his, the guys he has on his resumes, when you look at his resume, he... A lot of the fighters he fought, they were top 10 contenders in the middleweight division. But when it came to the big fights, they always lost for the most part. You know, Daniel Gill got a couple solid wins. You know, he beat Stern. He he beat Mundine. Uh, you know, Rubio beat Lemieux when he was undefeated. Lemieux beat, you know, he beat Indom and... He beat Rosado. You know, some of them got solid wins. For the for the most part, they lost their biggest fight. It's, you know, Gil lost. You know, he lost to Darren Barker. He, you know, Rubio lost to Pavlik back in the day. He lost to, uh, did he fight Chavez? I believe he lost to Chavez, too. Um, you know, these guys, Martin Murray, too. You know, he had a draw with Stern. You know, he, he beat, in my opinion, I thought he beat Martinez, but, you know, they didn't give him the decision, you know, and I thought he beat Abraham, too. Like, this is this is the problem with Golovkin's resume. The biggest fights he had, these guys usually lost their biggest fights, you know, by razor-edge decisions or whatever. When it was time to step up, they didn't win for the most part. But when they fought Golovkin, Golovkin beat them in a much better fashion than anybody else has ever beaten them. OK, that's the thing about his resume that is good. But Canelo's resume is more similar to how Danny Garcia's resume is, because all the other fighters want to fight them because they believe they can beat these guys. You know, guys at 140, 147, they want to fight Danny Garcia because they believe that Danny is not really that good. And he has a name, and they feel like they want to be the one to expose him. And the same thing goes for Canelo. When it comes to Golovkin, they don't. It's not the same mentality. It's not the same mentality. Like, yeah, you got Laura calling him out, and you have Ward calling him out. All right, but those are two guys in different division. All right, I already told you how I felt about Laura. You know, I I thought, in my opinion, and in, in my opinion, I think that Canelo should make it his. I mean, not Canelo. I'm sorry. I think that Golovkin should make it his business to fight that fight Laura because that's a that's a fight that people are asking for. That's if he doesn't fight Canelo. If, if, if the Canelo fight doesn't happen again, I think that Golovkin should make it his business. For all you people that say, oh, well, Laura and Heyman got to send the contract over to Golovkin. No, Golovkin should make it his business because Laura's name is constantly being brought up as of, of fighters. That's why I think the fight should happen. Make it your business to make sure that fight happened. Press Lara and his team to make the fight happen. Instead of when, when the microphone's in your face, it's in, in uh, Abel Sanchez's face or Golovkin's face or whoever's face, don't say, oh, Lara's not big enough. 
Because that's what we're, I'm basing it off, off what you said when the microphone was in your face. You're saying Laura's not been big enough yet that, you know, but I don't want to get into all of that. All right. I don't want it. This video is not really about that. But what I'm saying is that, uh, let's go back to what I was saying. Canelo, you know, Canelo and, and people scream all this about his resume. Listen, the guy is a unified title holder. The guy is a mandatory, okay? He's a mandatory. He's a unifying title holder, all right? He's a true middleweight, all right? Canelo, stop making excuses for Canelo not fighting the man, all right? You sound ridiculous. You people out there that is making all of these excuses for why the fight shouldn't happen, like, come on. Like, really? People want the fight. You got people in here. I'm in a bar. I'm in a huge bar, by the way, the, the biggest sports bar in New York City. And people are screaming and chanting G Triple G in a damn bar in New York City. You trying to tell me that people don't want this fight? People want the fight. We want to see the fight. You know? And you know what? Canelo could cont continue to be the A-side. He could get 80% of the money, the purse. You know? They can happen. It can happen in whatever city they want. Just fight at the weight, bro, and fight the man. Like, let's be real, you know? It's it's it's, it's getting ridiculous now. Are we going to wait another five years to get this fight? Are you going to wait till Golovkin is 39, year old, 39 years old and, and, and he's falling off before you jump in the ring with him? You know? Stop being a coward. We don't need to build a fight no more, okay? We didn't need to build a fight back when Canelo beat Cotto. He beat Cotto, and people are telling me they need to build a fight. The dude just beat Cotto. Golovkin beat Lemieux. This guy beat Cotto, you know. Let's get the fight going. No, he needs to knock out a guy at 147 for us to understand that this fight needs to happen. No, the fight needs to happen now. We don't need to wait anymore. It needs to happen in September. Now, if these guys don't budge, this is the thing with Golovkin. This is... This is the dilemma, all right? I I, I, I totally back Golovkin. The guy should be fighting at 160, all right? This is the lineal middleweight champion. We should be fighting at 160, okay? This is not two divisions, one bigger, one smaller guy like Andre Ward and Golovkin have to meet, come in the middle, anything like that. The, the, the catch weight makes more sense when, when a, there's a bigger fighter and a, a different division, all right? But Canelo's not in a different division. They're in the same division, all right? Golovkin needs to really decide, is it going to affect him coming down a few pounds? I personally believe that they're going to try to force a catch weight on maybe 157 or 158. You know, I think it's going to be 157. All right. I think these guys are not going to, they're going to stick to the catch weight thing. If Golovkin, only Golovkin and his team will know if this is going to be an issue for him. If he's having issues making 160 i don't think he does is he gonna have an issue making 157 you know um that's the that's the question you know and is it worth it i think it's worth it i think it's worth it. this is there's a part of me that says listen if he really wants to fight this guy how bad does he really want to fight this guy because he has to understand that they can strip him for the wbc but people will always is going to still continue to say that you have nobody on your resume. All right. My two options. I'm going to end the video with this. If you're not going to fight Canelo. Okay. If you're not going to fight Canelo. Right. Canelo decides you can't agree on him. Catch weight. They strip the WBC strip him. You know. Or whatever. You're either your very next fight or, you know, or. You know, well, the very next fight might be for the WBC title if they decide to strip him. So you probably got to fight whoever is the number one can, or right under you for that title. Cool. But do you really want that name on your resume? This is what Golovkin, Team Golovkin has to decide. Is it about the title or is it about the name? Okay. You might get the title, but people are still going to criticize you for not fighting anyone. 
Golovkin has to have some marquee name on his resume at some point. You know, um, I don't know. Like, you know, I think Laura is one of the guys that people are going to respect if he were to fight. So I think he should probably make that fight. You know, um, you know, I, I, there's a few guys at 154 that people w would respect. Um, if not, you know, I try to push the fight with Saunders, hopefully get the Saunders or Jacobs fight. You know, uh, WBA said that they're going to make that fight happen. So that can happen. So that's good too, you know, but he has to have somebody. Okay. We can't, I know he didn't want to fight Dominic Wade, but if he has a voluntary and he wants to get a, a voluntary matchup and he wants to fight anyone, anyone that he chooses, it can't be someone on a level as another Dominic Wade. Like, we got to get a good component in there, whether it's one of the other guys at 160 or whether it's a guy that people are going to respect that you fought and beat, you know, like a Demetrius Andrade or, or I mean, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of Canelo right now. Like, uh, uh, oh, it's not 160. It's not too many people left. Like, I think it really needs to be Saunders or Jacob, but... At least somebody, or at one somebody at one sixty eight, that you know you're willing to go up just to fight that one person. You know, I know he didn't do it for Ward, fine, but he has to get some name. He has to have some type of name, okay? Canelo, he could do what he wants to do. At this point, he's a superstar. He could fight whoever he wants. All right, he already has the names. He doesn't really have to prove it, anything. You know, he could fight someone else and have another showcase fight and knock them out too. It is what it is. You know, I don't think he's going to fight the Charlos, the Andrades, the, the Monterosians. I don't think he's going to take those fights, you know. I, I still think he's probably going to fight like a gay Rosado or something. You know, I think he's going to fight a fight that might be tough to the most people's eyes, but it's really not that tough for him, you know. But Golovkin needs to get a fight in there if the fight doesn't happen. But I think the fight will happen. I do have some hope in this in this. And, and Oscar and um, and I think the fight will happen because if it doesn't happen, it's gonna be very disappointing for the people. All right, and people want to see the fight now. People know who Triple G is. People really want this fight, so they should just make the fight. All right, but let's not make it. Stop making excuses for Canelo for the fight not happening. The guy is at 160. All right, stop talking about the A side. It has nothing to do with the weight that they're fighting in. Okay, these are not two divisions. Two different fighters for two different divisions, like all these other catchweights that we've seen. Okay, these are two guys in the same division, in the same division. All right, I know Canelo did. I, I know Cotto did it to Gill. I know he did it get to Gill. All right, I understand that. But we're talking about not a voluntary matchup. We're talking about the lineal title and against a, a unified champion in the division. All right, the guy in the division, Golovkin. We're talking about him. We're not talking about. Felix Sturm or some random guy. We're talking about the main guy at 160. All right? He shouldn't have to come down to 155 to fight uh, this guy that, Canelo, a guy that hasn't even fought anyone at middleweight yet. He hasn't even fought anyone at middleweight yet. You know? So, anyway, I got to go. I can't, you know, I'm, just, I'm done ranting about this. Um, there's a few things I wanted to speak on still that I didn't bring up, but... Whatever, you know, I'll get back to it on another video. But anyway, that's just a quick reaction to what everything I've been seeing. Um, let me know what you guys think and make sure you guys hit subscribe. All right, peace.